Mark, did you pay the bill? <laughs> he didn't pay the bill. Technical issue files. Someone didn't do their homework. The, the number one rule of all management meetings is the slide projector never works. Never works. <laughs> and, right. Right. Yeah. Always have a back. All right. Great. Great. It worked Monday. All right, folks. Slides Monday. All right. All right. Everyone, do we? Everyone have a package? Yes. Yes. All right. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and participating in this. It makes us. Uh, a town with people willing to help and help understand what we're doing. So I'd like to turn this over to Mark because Mark is best equipped to walk us through this. Okay, I, I don't see anybody who's new, so I think we all know each other, so I think introductions are not necessary, but we do have, in addition to the selectmen and myself, we do have the department heads here uh, to answer specific questions if you do have them. I'm going to be referring to to this packet that says public hearing on the front. And when I say the page numbers, there's a handwritten page number on each one of those pages, and that's what I'm going to be referring to, all right? And you, do you need the budget handouts? <laughs> <laughs> you, you did I know what year it is. <laughs> All right. All so, right. Um, and then I'll, I'll be going through the slides that are in the other packet. So the second slide um, is one that has definitions and just want to quickly make sure we're all using the same language here. The operating budget uh, is a combination of all of the expenditures of our departmental operations. It does not include bonding, special warrant articles, which are separate, separately considered at town meeting, or capital reserve warrant articles. So the operating budget is just what it takes to run the departments and pay our existing uh, bonds and notes and things like that. Um, throughout the year. Revenues are fees and income that we collect like motor vehicle registrations, dog licenses, ambulance fees, uh, all of the rec department revenue. That is uh, the money that comes into the town other than taxes. Okay, Some of it we get from the state of New Hampshire um, for revenue sharing and for our highways and things like that. But it's, it's everything except the taxes. An appropriation, when we talk about an appropriation, we mean an amount of money that town meeting votes on and approves and appropriates so that the selectmen during the year can spend it. We cannot spend a dollar without the town meeting appropriating it. So when we vote on the budget, we're voting on the gross budget. We do not take the revenues into account during the votes. You're, you've got to appropriate all of the money so that it can be spent, however that money is raised. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, the next slide says tax impact of the proposed budget. When you look at page two of the public hearing packet. <coughs> Towards the bottom of the page, there is an estimated, a line item that says estimated amount of taxes to raise. And then it compares what town meeting appropriated last year, $2,819,000, and what we are anticipating to raise this year $2,831,000. That difference is $12,328. That is the, when you, if you approve every warrant article and every amount of money that's in the warrant at town meeting, the gross amount of taxes to raise for the entire year will go up $12,000. Okay, and then on this slide here where it says tax impact, I've just shown you what that means for individual properties. 
that are representative. So if your property is worth $500,000, that means for 2017, your taxes in the tap for the town portion of the tax rate will go up $18.50 for the year. That does not take into account the county or the school in any way. That's just for the town. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, so the next slide says budget overview. At the top, we have the operating budget, which is those monies to run all of the departments and all of the regular operating costs, minus any capital improvements, minus any bond issues and all of that. That amount for fiscal year 2017 is increasing by $145,239. We have no new bonds that are being proposed this year, so we have no bond votes. Um, the other, the special warrant articles are $235,000. So those will be individual warrant articles. We'll talk about what those are, um, but you'll see those will be separate when we get to town meeting and they take a separate vote. So that's $235,000 and that's up 24783 So that means our total appropriation, the gross budget of the town is going up $170,022. Now our estimated revenue, including uh, the use of surplus to offset taxes, is going up $157,000. So there's a couple of things to note. The departmental revenues, the water department, sewer, trash, public safety, motor vehicles, that's going down. Okay, that portion of the revenues are going down. The $157,000 increase is primarily two things. We have $120,000 which is going to be from a grant and use of fund balance. And we have uh, $50,000. OK. It is from a grant and our available The, the our town, yes, our surplus. How much is which? Six, uh, 60 and 60. So in other it's 50-50 grant. Okay. So in other words, we're getting half from grant has been approved? No. no. If, we're, we if we get it. All right. So if we do not get it, yes. right, what does that do to the budget line? Then what, what we did this year when we did not get it, Department of Revenue Administration took out all the revenue and the expense. It had no impact on the budget. So, so to be clear, yes. if we do not get the grant, none of the $120,000 will be spent in the next Correct. Year. That's correct. correct. Our 60 and the 60 we're not getting. But, That's so, right. right. No, I yes. don't care about no. the 60 grant. In other words, if, 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 yes, we're not, if, not if, if we don't get the grant, 120,000 doesn't get spent. Correct. None of it gets spent. That's correct. what I said. Yes. Okay. And then the other, the other part of that is we have another um, $50,000 that we are applying to a couple of warrant articles I'll highlight those as we go through that are also coming from fund balance. So we're using a total of $110,000 in fund balance and we're getting $60,000 in uh, grant. So that total is 170, so you can see the rest of the departments have gone down about $20,000. All right, okay. And then, so, when you do the math, the bottom line is that estimated amount to be raised in taxes, which I just showed you on page two of this budget summary, and that comes out to, to a $12,000 increase. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So let's look at the specific step-by-step -step here. We have um, four 
items that are driving that increase, that $12,000 increase, and that is personnel costs. Um, right now, our personnel costs are about 48% of our total budget. Um, those, we're, we're proposing a 1.5% cost of living adjustment to all of the town employees, uh, full-time uh, employees wages. And um, our retirement and health insurance costs are going up and I'll talk about those in more detail as we go. We then have a substantial increase in our insurance costs, property liability and workers' compensation. We've had a couple of accidents over the past uh, two years and they take a three year time period and those accidents are now showing up in that three year time period. We're a very small organization so that when we have a, a big accident where someone gets hurt or we have property damage, then uh, those uh, tend to impact us more than if we were in a larger community and only had those two accidents. Um, capital improvements, we're continuing to recommend projects for capital improvements. Um, they're primarily in the water and sewer departments and uh, our regular replacement of town vehicles. And I'll talk about those more in just a second. Uh, and then we have $31,000, which is uh, in here for our townwide revaluation project. Um, it is, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to it. But those four areas are the use, are the uh, areas that are impacting our budget the most. Use of fund balance is the next slide. It just shows you the $110,000 that's being applied uh, for this year. Since 2011, we've used a total of $1,083,000 of fund balance to offset the tax rate. So basically this is money that we did not expend uh, in our operating budget or it's revenue that we collected in excess of what we thought we were gonna collect by the end of the fiscal year. So what, we've, what the selectmen have done is take a portion of that throughout the years and used it to fund pro primarily capital projects um, but vehicle purchases and things like that. Um, well, yes, go ahead. Before the question gets asked, we still have close to a million dollars yes. in our fund balance after giving this 110. Right, after giving. So we are in extremely right. strong financial condition to do this. We've also used fund balance in the past to equalize and lower, keep the tax rate lower and to bring it down. The fund balance was used to bring the tax rate from 1440 to 14 last year. That was one of the examples for the use of it. And we are well above what the state requires for a fund balance for a town of our size. They right. require, I think, 13% I, and we're about 30% yeah. of our budget. Right. right. So we, yeah, we're retaining about about 16% and um, they recommend anywhere from 5 to 17%. So we're, we're on the high end of that retention. So we're, one, we're one other good. thing we ought, we ought to mention mm -hmm. that fund balance does for us, it means that we don't have to borrow money while we're waiting for taxes to be paid. So we can use that fund balance as kind of our floating cash right. account right. while we're waiting for taxes to come in and we don't have to borrow from the bank to cover expenses during that period. All right. Okay. Any questions on the use of fund balance? Debt service is the next slide. Um, the capital improvements program is on pages eight and nine in this packet. Okay, so if you go to pages eight and nine, the capital improvements program is um, the purview of the planning board. They review, it is a six year program that lays out uh, our capital expenses, which we have traditionally defined as at least over $10,000 and a useful life at least of five years. Um, so those sorts of items, sometimes we have included vehicles in an operating budget, but generally all of our vehicles are also included in this program. 
Um, so the planning board talks about the entire six year plan that is laid out here. The column on the left that is highlighted, the 2017 column, the entire program is sent to the selectmen and the selectmen review those projects in the 2017 column. They, also, they look at the entire plan, but their focus is on the funding of those of the projects in the colored column, okay, in the highlighted column. So what is shown on this chart that's in your handout is just tracking our bonded debt for the six year period. So it shows you that basically if, if this entire plan were passed over the next six years and all of the equipment, everything was funded at the level that they're showing on this, then our maximum debt amount that we would have over that six year period would be $3,960, okay? And it shows you where the borrowing happens. That is the new debt line. It shows you where, the, where those bond issues happen. And it shows you the final line is the debt retired line, which is the bottom line on the chart. That shows you our principal payments that are part of the budget that we make over this period. The reason that the lines are dotted after 2022 is because there's nothing in the plan right now. So it just shows you the debt service payments and how what, what would happen to the debt if we didn't do anything else. Well, we know where that's not the case. So that's why we make it dotted. Okay. Any questions or comments that the board wants to make on this? Um, we are limited. Uh, we are limited by the state of New Hampshire in the maximum amount of debt that we can have. Um, it's three percent of our total valuation for the town, and it's ten percent of our total valuation for the water department. The sewer department is not limited because we're under federal regulations, so basically anything they tell us we have to do, we have to do. So the state does not limit the sewer. Right now, in this plan, um, we're using nine, uh, almost 10% of our available town debt, okay? And we're using about 4.5% of our available water debt. Um, so we're, we're in, you know, we have the capacity if we have an emergency or something unexpected to come up, we do have the authority uh, to borrow the money to take care of the emergency. Any questions? Yes. Tom. Tom Heyer, uh, Moss Pass Road. Can you uh, elaborate a bit on the need for another Emergency generator. In other words, the one that was installed last year. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can take that one. It's a requirement. We, the, uh, the wastewater treatment plant needs its own generator. We looked into seeing if we could get a line to run the one from the town over, and we were told that if we, on a busy weekend, if the thing goes out within a matter of a few minutes, it would not be pretty. It's one of these things that's the way the system is designed, and the generator was how many years old? Uh, it's about 40 years old. Yeah. 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 No, the existing. Yeah. We, no, no, we looked into alternatives to see if we could tie it in with all the other. It, basically, our, the generator that we put in put, puts out 220 volts. We need 480. We have big machinery at the treatment plant, and it, it's not viable to connect it. Yep. Question? Good job. All right. Special warrant. All right, special warrant articles. So these will be separate items on the town meeting warrant. You'll vote on them separately from the, the town operating budget. As we talked about, the R-Town grant is the same grant that we voted on last year. 
we were not successful last year and it was taken out of the budget before the tax rate was set um, where we have reapplied for that grant and updated our application um, we will not find out whether we were successful until April so the plan is to do the same thing um, if we are not successful we'll take it out of the budget before we uh, set the tax rate do you know why we weren't successful uh, we did review yes our the person who's helped us write the grant reviewed it with the the agency um, they had um, I want to say they had something like 150 to 200 applications they only granted um, 40 of them um, so it's a very competitive program uh, we they do not list where we ended up in the grant application so we don't know where in that 200 we fell um, but we did talk to the agency and and made some modifications to our application um, it, you know and we're going to try one more time and if we get it we get it yep. it is this is not um, it does not have anything um, to do with major construction this is for signage um, so there is an entrance sign to the town and there are wayfinding directional signs um, at major intersections and and signs along our trail system uh, in conjunction with the resort um, from all the way at the Mad River all the way up through to and around Corcoran's Pond to get people out of the center of town um, and out. Before so, any of this money will be spent, if we right. receive the grant, we will have numerous public hearings for input on how to best use the money within the guidelines of the grant, which are not specifically just for signs. It deals with some other things that will enhance the whole experience and give us a, a branded look. So like you, when you would go to another resort, everything looks alike where people will know where they're going or have a better shot of knowing where they're going. But none of the money is going to be spent without a lot of input. But it's also important to realize the money is for signs. There's no new trails. This is not, we're not having new bicycle trails. This is signs. Am I understanding correctly, it won't be spent unless you get the grant? Right, that's right. <laughs> what is the time that it has to be spent if you get it? Um, we have two years, two years under the grant to okay. spend it. Um, the 50th anniversary celebration will also be there's a ten thousand uh, dollar request um, this is for a town sponsored um, heyday uh, or heyday I keep saying heyday because I was in Farmington um, but old home day uh, activities a field day carnival type of thing which will be coordinated um, primarily with Brooke and the resort um, to have a weekend where uh, we can celebrate the 50th anniversary of the town. This month uh, was the vote back in 1967, which changed the town from the town of Waterville to the town of Waterville Valley. It's also the first year that the, res or that the ski area operated. Um, so we're, we're um, celebrating both of those 50th anniversaries so the resort has taken the lead on the uh the event on the 25th which you may have heard about over at the conference center um and and that's marking the actual day that we became waterville valley and then this ten thousand dollars will be in the summer so that we can include uh non-resident property owners and hopefully get folks uh to come in for a old home day style event. Any questions on that? Tom? Doesn't seem like a lot of money. Um, well, if we get bands and we do a big party and have a thing where, yeah. where if there's any cost to the townspeople, it's affordable, it's subsidizing, right. so everyone can participate. Right. So it's inclusive. The biggest problem is going, to, is going to be getting volunteers who want to work on this. Right. Help Brooke. That's going to be the issue. Well, we'll cross that when we get to it. 
All right, the zoning ordinance update. The planning board um, has been working, and there are there are nine warrant articles this year that we are cleaning up the zoning ordinance, wording in the zoning ordinance, et cetera. Um, but they, are, can, they still have some items uh, that they need to address. Uh, and this $10,000 is for legal and planning professional uh, assistance in doing that update. Does that mean, does that mean that we are not going to be voting on them this year, we'll be voting on them next year? That's correct. This $10,000 the would, would yes, right. be for professional services okay. only. Yep. All right, great. Next, operating budget capital accounts, or capital projects, I'm sorry. Um, well number three continues to, to be a problem. We, we still have bacteria uh, present in the well. We have disconnected it from the water system itself. So um, during this $25,000, will um, be for a, uh, a consultant, a water hydrologist to come in and, and uh, help us investigate what caused the bacteria problem at the well and determine some op options for us for fixing it going forward. Um, you'll see in the warrant article that it says for the investigation and repair. We don't think we can do both the um, hydrogeologic investigation and fix it for 25,000. But we wanna be able, if, we're, if the investigation doesn't cost the full 25,000, we wanna be able to use whatever's left over <coughs> to start to do the repairs. And then there, there would probably be another warrant article next year for the money for the repairs. But we don't have any idea what that's going to be at this point in time. We've, we've got a, a well that, that we just cannot disinfect. We've tried and we need somebody to help us identify what's wrong. So, Mark, what you're saying is that well number three is not going to be available for use for at least 15, 18 months? We don't, we don't know we don't, that. We don't know. We're, we're hoping that, you know, I'm mean, seeing reports in California because of the drought, now that there's water there, these wells are coming back online. We might be back online again, but this well had a problem, I believe, eight years ago. So we need to investigate what's causing the problems. Yeah, but we, we don't do need have, this well with a new one coming on. We, we don't need this, but we do need it to meet our requirement with a state permit. In long term, we need it. Long term. Sure. Meaning we are not running out of water, we are not having a problem with getting water. But the mandates that the state requires us to have a water district and provide water require us to have the capacity of well three. Which one is well three? It's the one way in the back. It's, 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 by, by the Mad River Trail? Yeah. 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 That's okay. I thought I just heard yeah. Bill and Mike say two different things. We did. No, we didn't. No, no. Let me give you my definition. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give my definition and then see if it makes sense to you. What happens is we have regulations that we have to meet to have uh, to deal with this, the federal government and have water. Right. We are not. We are technically not meeting the obligations, but we are providing more than we need. The obligation, the level that we're held to is so much higher than what we will ever need. Is that, That's what we're forced with. That's why we have to try to bring well three online. With one, is that, does that answer? I so, yes, so. I, I understand that, but my issue is this, and, and I've got the same as you guys do, a little bit of experience with various federal regulations, some of which we wink at, and some of which, when we wink at it, we get trouble. We can't wink at this. So, so, here's us. So, so, what I heard you say is, we do not need well three online in order to properly take care of whatever our town needs in the near future. However, we will be outside of that which is required of us under federal and or state regulations. 
state. Correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Uh, yes. And and how long are we allowed to be outside of those regulations before Mark gets back? With with well four, we're finishing up the new well out in the national forest. Yeah. And we should have that running in the system within a month to a month and a half. Okay. Okay. Once that happens, the state told us investigate what's wrong with well three and let us know and then we'll talk about what the long-term options are for well three because well two the one right by the river and well four out in the national forest provide more than enough water for our needs okay on a day-to-day -day basis but like mike said we are required with one of those wells out of service broken right that the one remaining well provide all of our needs in the worst possible scenarios that they can make up and that's where we run into problems okay because one of the one of the two wells that we will have on two or four if one of them goes down then we have issues that's right so so what we want to have is is three wells so that we can have one down and still provide the water that we need. So unofficially, as I yes. think I heard you say, yeah. unofficially what the state has told us is they're giving us a pass yes. a period of time or whatever you want to say. Well, while it's not unofficial, Mike. We have it's to official. a plan we, for, to we, provide them as to how to bring this online. That's right. There's they, no unofficial passes with these. No, plans. they're they're telling us. Yeah. No, they're telling right. us that they will the period that yeah. they will wait is until we give them the, the options right. for well three to fix it. Right. Because we have to get it back online. Okay. Great. Let's move on to the next if there's nothing else about the well. All right. Vehicles. No, uh, no. Oh. Sewer sort of plants generate oh. the largest. Sorry. Cost. Anyone? Any more questions on that one? Oh yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. And then the water sewer repair account. We use this for uh, for breaks primarily for main breaks. Um, we're also we are, we have sewer manholes that need to be repaired, um, and this is twenty five thousand dollars to bring us up to an available amount there of about $37,000 for the year. Um, so it's emergency stuff, so we don't have to take it. And Mark, we funded that last year, correct? And we, we and, keep- and what did we, we fund that for? Uh, I think it was 20,000. Right. Yeah. And so we, we, so we've some used years 11. We, we run a surplus on this, other years we don't. It's a matter of what breaks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Operating budget vehicles, um, water and wastewater, pickup truck, uh, we, now that we have well four, we have requirements to go out uh, to it on a regular basis and inspect it. We also need a vehicle to access uh, well three out by the Mad River Trail. Uh, now that it's out of, you know, we're having problems with it, we need to get to it more. So this is for a four wheel drive half ton pickup. Um, in our operating, or in our capital improvements program, it's got a useful life of about 10 years for this use. And then we have the two leases that we approved last year. So we have the second of three payments on those leases. The next slide says capital reserve accounts. Um, we are adding, uh, the, the, proposing to add those amounts of money to the capital reserves and you can see there there's an available balance that that will give us if we appropriate that money. We currently have about $220,000 in capital reserve accounts for many different purposes, um, as you can see here. So this would bring it up to about 302. These accounts are used for repairs of the equipment. And then when the time comes for replacement, if there's a balance in the account, that'll go towards the uh, towards reducing the bond issue, or however we're paying for it. And it's important to note. Uh, I think we had a question last year about combining these together. Um, they can only be spent for the purposes that are laid out by the Warren article. So, to keep the Warren articles more simple, 
uh, we try to divvy them up to specific purposes. Then there's the second page of capital reserve accounts. Any questions on any of those? The town operating budget. Um, as I said before, we have health insurance. Uh, we have a, an increase of about 8% uh, in our health insurance premium costs. Uh, and then we have the 1.5% cost of living adjustment um, for all the full-time town employees. The workers' comp um, insurance uh, premiums are going up. Um, if you want to move forward a few um, slides, the uh, property liability um, insurance premiums are on line 4196 on page one of this packet. It's going up about $35,543. Our um, Personnel costs in total, um, we're looking at uh, total, let me just find the number here. Salary and wages with the 1.5% COLA uh, is um, going up about $15,000, represents about a percent and a half more than what we did last year. It does include increases in overtime, per diem, seasonal, all of that. Let's see, what else? And then the property revaluation is on line 4152 on page one. Um, so let's take a look at this. It'll be easier to go down through this. It says public hearing on the front. Go to page one of that. And we'll just quickly go down through <coughs> line 4152 is the reval. It, you see that it's only going up $13,212, right, from last year. But there is a $31,000, no. oh, sorry, sorry, $26,000. Sorry, read the wrong one. $26,000. Um, that's because some of the work that the revaluation company does on a regular basis can be done as part of the reval. So the $31,000 covers uh, some of our regular assessing work. So the increase is only a net of $26,000. Um, Mark, just review, yep. um, we are required to do a full reval. How many? Every five years. Um, and it has been five, it actually, this is year six. Yeah. So it is time for us to do our, our total reval. Okay. Uh, personnel costs are driving a lot of uh, the other departmental individual increases that you see. And these, these uh, retirement costs are state mandated. We have no control over that. That's so right. And it varies by department and position, so it's not uniform. It's not it's uniform across. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then you see the 35,543 on line 4196 insurance. That's the workers' comp and <coughs> property liability increases. Debt services, uh, line 4711 and 4712 are down uh, because we have paid off bonds and notes. So those numbers have gone down. And then you see the capital projects listed there on page two. Yes? How much is the town borrowing for this year? Zero. Zero new, yeah. zero new debt. That's if we no, that's if we. Going forward, you're in the, you might be the wrong year, John. 
Yeah, John, the 2018, we will. There's a fire truck. There's a fire truck. Yeah. So, <laughs> which hasn't been established, we're doing it. So right. So, yeah. So, so if you look at the the blue line, this line right here, this shows the borrowing in 2018, and then the borrowing in 19, 20, and 21, and 22. So, those are what makes this go up. Yeah. Any other questions? The detail is um, detailed budget for each department is on pages yeah. three through nine. So, Ray, you, you have a question? Ray? Yeah, I'm on uh, Autumn 95 Cemetery. Mm -hmm. yep. You see that one down to you know, 9,500 bucks. Right, because yeah. what we did was we found, what we did was we, were, we had budgeted $10,000 to have a granite monument made for the cemetery as an entranceway where we could put plaques of remembrance where people who didn't qualify to be buried or maybe had a community root here wanted to be remembered in the Waterville Cemetery. And through our uh, Well 4 project, we found some great flat-faced boulders. <laughs> so the boulders are up there and we're going to build that memorial wall out of the boulders. So that saved us $9,500. So that's why the cemetery is gone down. That's why it went down. Yeah. Yes. I think they're up there. They're up there. Right? They're we up just there. have to figure out where to put them. Any other questions, folks? Oh, great. I want to thank everybody for participating in this. Uh, one other thing we would like to bring up that uh, yeah. a warrant of, you want to bring it up, Bill? Sure. Well, there Bill has been it. a petition submitted as a warrant article. So this is a group of citizens that have signed a petition that want to change the town dog ordinance. And effectively, what, they, what the, the nature of the change they're asking for is going to be a requirement that all dogs be on leashes. At all times. And this is a, now we're required to put this on the warrant, and it will be debated at town meeting and voted on at town meeting. And we are not going to get into the politics of whether this is a good idea, bad idea today, but I just want to let you know it's coming, and you should talk to your fellow citizens about what it is you want to do as a town, because it's going to be your choice. You know? All right. Thank you, Bill. All right. So I think uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Can I get one? <coughs> Some vote. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. Thank you. Then we are adjourned. Thank you all for participating. What's the opposing viewpoint about?